So uh, the PC is a platform, you know, it lets you run the software you want. Windows as an operating system is an example of a platform. You can run the applications you want, same with the iPhone. And then in another sense, even a highway is a platform. You know, the government builds the road, but they don't operate all the cars, they don't operate all the trucks, they don't do the transportation. They just build the platform and let you do what you want on top of it. It supports enormous economic growth when you get a platform right. So let me show you what happens when you can use, when you use a platform uh, that um, is not governmental. This is just, let me see if I can get this to work here. Hmm. Well, maybe, not. maybe I'll skip this example. Um, so, uh, oh, here we go. So this is, what you're looking at is Haiti, uh, right after the earthquake. You're going to see the earthquake right there. What you're looking at is, in real time, a representation of all kinds of mapping data, geographic mapping data that's being added to an open street map of Haiti. One of the big problems uh, when the earthquake hit was that Haiti was not well mapped. There wasn't any detailed information online about roads, their names, buildings, locations of hospitals, clinics. And so what you just saw, to run again, is people all over the world in places like Boston and Moscow and London taking communications that are coming in from Haiti and taking satellite images that are available from Google Earth and translating it into maps and mapping data. They're looking through old sources to try to find names and directions, and they're taking actual reports about people trapped under buildings and the locations of clinics um, to build this real online map that the rescuers from NGOs and um, military agencies and others on the ground were using, uh, all crowdsourced taking advantage of the internet as a platform, maps as a platform, and communications platforms that you can uh, uh, utilize in that crisis. Another similar example is something called Map Kibera. So Map Kibera, um, Kibera is the sort of favela, or the kind of like worst informal slum in Nairobi, worst in the sense of poverty. And it's probably got like a million, million and a half people that live in this tiny, dense little place. And the problem was that the government would never authorize a map of this place to be made because they didn't want to legitimize an illegal settlement. So the people of Kibera set out to make an online map that they built all by themselves. And they used the web, they used Google Maps, they used mobile devices to sketch out locations of places, roads, businesses, clinics, schools, and everything that you might need just to create a representation of their community which they can then use to layer data, do civic planning, um, and, and anything else you might want to do. Okay, so one way to make government a platform is to free data. Governments are sitting on lots of data, census data, statistical data, real-time data about traffic, data about hospitals and their mortality rates. You can think of all kinds of data that government agencies generate and produce. So one way for government to become a platform that supports other people's, their citizens and startups and other businesses' activities is to take the data they have and make it freely available online in digital form that can be read by machines, so standardized machine-readable data. So one of the first things we did in the Obama White House was we created a site called data.gov, which is really a hub. So it's a place where you can connect with data sets and data feeds that um, come from any part of the federal government. And our idea was that people would build things on top of this. Here's an example of what you can do with government data. This is a, a, a DC site that took crime reports from Washington, DC, produced by the Washington, DC government. And they made a site called Stumble Safely. What this means is you can show, it shows you which bar you are at and lets you plot a path to your subway stop or your home that avoids the most high crime areas. So if you want to stumble home after you're wasted at 10 a, you know, 2 a.m. on a Friday, Stumble Safely is the application that uses government data to plot you a safe path home. So it's kind of a goofy example, but it's, uh, it's an example of what can be done. Um, people have built applications that use bicycle accident data to say how do you get from one side of town to the other on a bicycle without going through the intersections where people most often get hit. It literally can save lives in real time. So the uh, uh, word for, for this is, is um, DIO, or do it ourselves. Not DIY, do it yourself, but do it ourselves. In other words, if the government is the platform 
and produces, uh, provides the data that entrepreneurs and NGOs and others will build useful applications on top of the data um, that allow citizens to work together, not just to solve their problems. And there's a beautiful kind of like left-right thing about this when you bring Web 2.0 technologies and internet technologies into government, which is that if you do it well, right-wing people who want less government and cheaper government will be happy because the use of these technologies can make government smaller and much less expensive. And left-wing people can be happy because it makes government much more effective. It actually makes government able to do what it wants to do in an effective way. So that's kind of the fantasy. One way in which we've tried to get entrepreneurs and startups to take advantage of government as a platform is by using contests um, and prizes. So for example, we did an Apps for America contest where one of the winners was a small uh, uh, startup called uh, Gulf Pulse. What they did was they took the official publications of the federal government and turned it into a, a service that's kind of like Google Alerts, where you can say of all the official publications of the federal government, which is like 70,000 pages every year, I want you to send me an alert each time my town shows up, each time my industry shows up, each time it's a new contract or a new um, business opportunity with government, send me an email. Um, and uh, they make it easy to find comments, uh, uh, proposals that are open for comment, and so forth and so on. The story, by the way, is that once they won this contest, they then got hired by the agency that produces that official record to um, build out a whole new version of it, which they did, and they got their business started as a real for-profit entrepreneurial company. In New York City, they hosted a contest called Big Apps, which um, one of the winners of which was uh, My City Way, which uses government-produced data about everything you can think of, you know, what kind of health grade did this restaurant get, um, what kind of events are happening this week, and they create iPhone applications. They recently, just like a month ago, closed a $5 million Series A round. So they had the idea, won the contest, using government data, and now they're a capitalized startup uh, with a real shot at success. So I'm involved with two organizations that I want to mention just quickly because I want to hopefully plant a seed in some brains out there that these are things that ought to exist in Argentina as well. The first one is called Code for America. Um, you know, uh, you might have heard of Teach for Argentina, which is sort of a sister organization for Teach for America, but this is people that give two years of their lives to go teach in schools that have a teacher shortage. So we have this idea of well, this organization called Code for America, which takes nerds, like real coders, and puts them in small teams where they work with cities to build particular online applications, which then get open sourced and made available to any city that wants to use them. So we're going uh, from four cities last year to seven cities next year. They're building all kinds of cool applications. And it's the kind of thing that will only make sense in Argentina if people in Argentina want to go and sort of organize it. If any of you in here are interested in this as an idea, you should come and connect with me afterwards. A parallel organization that we set up is called Civic Commons, which tries to help cities build open source technology that they can share amongst themselves. They build it in common and they can uh, uh, reuse it and uh, contribute to it in the open source style. Um, it's uh, two organizations that are trying to promote the idea of government as a platform, where government provides basic information and services um, through the internet to its citizens and supports entrepreneurs and startups to create much more rich, much more um, effective ways of citizens working together to solve problems. The best example of something we're working on right now is called Open 311. The 311 is a weird name, but it comes from New York City where they use the phone number 311 uh, to connect to the service. And what it is is a central place for all citizen communications to the city. So if you have a complaint, a request, a proposal, a suggestion, you send it by email or text message or you make a phone call to 311. There's even an API on the front end, so any entrepreneur or startup can build a, uh, a, a, an interface for the public to put data into the system to take it out. And what it does is as these complaints come in, the system gives it a ticket, hands it to the responsible agency, and then tracks all the follow-up. And if you do this well, this becomes the data set that the city can rely on to do real performance management for public services. So the mayor can see who's doing well, who's doing badly, how long is it taking, what are people complaining about. This is what it looks like to the public. It's a map that shows that what you see here is my house in red. 
And this is uh, 24 hours of complaints in my neighborhood uh, in Brooklyn. And it shows you what people are complaining about, when they complained, the status of the request, and then it shows you the city's last message to the citizen. What did they last tell them? So these are things like graffiti, broken sidewalks, noise, potholes. And it's not that the city can magically fix all these things, but it gives you a picture and visibility into what's going on in the city. The dashboard for the mayor can give him graphics like this. This shows you 24 hours in the life of New York City. Each line is an hour, so it's from midnight to midnight. And you can see noise complaints are the most uh, popular. Um, also broken street lights, blocked driveways, uh, dirty conditions, etc., etc. This is the kind of data that you can get about the city, and an effective mayor can then manage the city against actual data just by having a central place for citizens to communicate with the city. It's very powerful. Lest you think that this only can exist in a rich city like New York, here's a version in India called Kirti, which uses open source software and provides a very similar service for tracking and managing complaints in Delhi. Another application that we worked on on a very small scale, which I think captures some of this platform idea, is a, a, department, a fire department in California produced a mobile app which was inspired by the fire chief sitting in a restaurant and seeing an ambulance pull up to try to rescue a heart attack victim next door and then uh, failed, got there too late. The fire chief thought, if only I had known, I might be able to have rescued uh, that victim because I can do uh, you know, CPR, I can do the resuscitation. So the city produced um, and provides data from their 911 service for these kinds of emergencies, CPR emergencies. And it goes over to a special mobile app. And if you are trained for CPR, your phone will ring, you'll see an alert, it shows you where you are, it shows you where the victim is, and it shows you where all of the automatic defibrillators, some of those things that go clear and pink, and it, you know, uh, revive the patient. It shows you those locations very precisely. You know, maybe on the second floor of a school building in the back closet, it tells you where to get it. So this probably won't save a lot of people, but there will be at least some cases each year where someone is closer than the ambulance and can get there and rescue the person faster. So all the government is doing here is providing data that it already has, and the community can respond to make the, uh, you know, uh, make the rescue. Very quickly, I just want to mention two examples of where government can, instead of building anything themselves, can simply take advantage of tools that are already out there. So Iceland uh, uh, had a financial crisis in 2008, and one of the results is that they're rewriting their constitution. So they convened a constitutional group. By the way, does anyone here speak Icelandic? No. So I'm going to pretend that I know how to pronounce this. It's called something like Sturmladerav. Uh, 